We are all fascinated by history's kings and queens, as well as their palaces. History has always been fascinating and entertaining, whether it be Greek deities or ancient American royal families. But there's more to this glorifying of royalty than meets the eye. This video will expose the revolting truths of royal people and unveil the disgusting practices and palaces. Welcome to History Uncovered. Be sure to like and subscribe. Number 1. Bathing and Personal Hygiene The Egyptians, especially Queen Cleopatra, were renowned for taking sour milk baths to improve the appearance and texture of their skin. But history reveals a different perspective. After the numerous deadly plagues of the Middle Ages, it was believed that cleaning the skin left the pores open to toxins and disease. So it was recommended to bathe as little as possible and to avoid hot water at all costs. This was the most recent medical advice at the time in most of Europe. Number 2. Bad Breath it would be revolting to be talking to someone and smelling their bad breath. Bad breath was very common because toothbrushes and toothpaste did not exist at the time. So, how would these royal deities react? To get rid of the odor, people would rub their teeth and gums with cloths covered in herb mixtures. Other treatments included rinsing the mouth with ice water, chewing celery or cider peel, and applying bay leaves and musk as an antiseptic. Number 3. Clearance of Places have you ever found it fascinating how the royal buildings maintained their cleanliness and odor? Well, in reality was it nothing like that. From the Palace of Versailles in France to Kensington Palace in London, visitors marvel at the beauty and majesty of these royal palaces. But when they were first built and housed royal courtiers, they were exceedingly filthy, with ungodly smells, rat infestations, and piles of human waste littering the floor. At the time, true cleanliness was unattainable in royal palaces. The next best solution was to mark the odor to help cleanse the foul, smelling air. Palaces would be filled with scented flowers and plants, and courtiers would soak themselves in perfume and hold perfumed sachets to their noses as they moved around. Number 4. Human Excrement Have you ever wondered what royals used to do before toilets were invented? Before toilets were invented, chamber pots were used as latrines. In these pots, people would do their business and then throw the finished product out the window. Instead of running water or flushing toilets, chamber pots were scattered throughout the palace. This is not it. Unfortunately, many courtiers couldn't be bothered to find a chamber pot. Instead, they would sometimes drop their britches wherever they had a modicum of privacy, such as a hallway, a stairway, or a fireplace and do their business right on the floor. Isn't it filthy? Not for royal people. Interesting fact. Cleaning intimate areas was done by hand or with corncob leaves. Number five, royal attire. Let's be honest. We all have been in love with the royal queen's long gown made of silk with rich trimmings of other materials. The love for velvet was also frequently used as gown. Manufacturing material. Oh well, embellished tunic was then worn on top of the gown. Clothing was the most glorious aspect of royal history. We've all been smitten with how, as a basic dress, the king would typically wear a well. Embellished tunic with gold, work thread. On top of that, a surcoat with the king and his family's emblem was frequently worn. Robes and coats were also worn by the king on special occasions. Generally, the larger the territory under a king or emperor, the more elaborate his attire. Unfortunately, royal history suggests a lack of hygiene in clothing as well. People would change their clothes when they became extremely dirty or infested with fleas, moths, or bedbugs. Linen fabric was a popular textile at the time and aided in the absorption of sebum and sweat. When people changed their clothes, they assumed they no longer needed to shower and would only clean exposed areas such as the face and arms. Number 6. Dirty Laundry some of history's most famous reigns, such as Catherine the Great's, took place in places with foul odors, too many people, overflowing chamber pots, and lice infested furniture. Despite the fact that paintings of Louis XIV's lavish court at Versailles depict royals wearing beautifully embroidered clothes, viewers today miss one of the main effects of their finery, the smell of hundreds of unwashed clothes kept in a room with no ventilation. And Charles II of England allowed his flea, ridden spaniels to sleep in his bedroom, which a 17th century writer described as very offensive and made the whole court dirty and stinky. Seems like you are enjoying video. Hit the like button and subscribe. Number 7 Nights in Royal Bedroom You've probably seen the Queen's canopy bed and satin curtains with bird, figure, tassel, and lace patterns. Isn't it fascinating? 
What about upholstered bedroom furniture for kings and a Venetian mirror, a Florentine cabinet with silver and Pietra Dura mosaics, and colorful Turkish and Persian carpets? Captivating, the truth about this opulent and regal bedroom is about to be revealed. According to Alison Weir, author of the history book Henry VIII, the king and his court, the clean, freak king fought a constant battle against the dirt, dust, and smells that couldn't be avoided when so many people lived in one place. This was unusual at the time. The king slept on a bed surrounded by furs to keep bugs and small animals at bay. Visitors were warned not to wipe or rub their hands on any of the king's heiress tapestries that could hurt them. Do you still find it fascinating? Let us know in comment section below. Number 9 Royal Kitchens Many of us dreams to have a dinner with royal kings and queens, but after knowing this fact you might change your mind. Many of the rules imposed by the king showed that he was losing the battle against the growing dirt. Henry had large red excess painted on the garden walls where servants and courtiers liked to pee. Instead of discouraging men from using the restroom, it provided them with a goal. People didn't seem to pay attention when they were told not to leave dirty dishes in the corridors or on the king's bed. Henry was even forced to pass legislation prohibiting royal kitchen cooks from working naked or in such filthy clothes as they do now, or sleeping in the kitchen or on the ground by the fire. To address the issue, kitchen clerks were instructed to purchase honest and wholesome clothing for the staff. Number 9 Drainage Facilities Despite its beauty, both the royals and the people who worked there lived in conditions that were no better than the slums of many European cities at the time. Some men urinated off the royal chapel's balustrade, while some women lifted their skirts to pee where they stood. According to Tony Spaforth, historian and author of Versailles, a biography of a palace, Marie Antoinette was once hit in the face by human waste thrown out a window as she walked through an inner courtyard. Latrines that were frequently used leaked into the bedrooms below them, and clogs and corrosion in the palace's iron and lead pipes were known to poison everything in Marie's kitchen. According to Antoinette Spaforth, not even the royal children's rooms were safe. If the court had left Versailles more frequently, it might have been less worn down and had fewer structural issues. Conclusion the alluring images of royal palaces with state rooms that look as though they were plucked from a Disney fairy tale or of royal castles with old masters hanging on the walls and state rooms that get progressively more opulent are all too familiar. But reality paints a different picture. Many people died in Europe's royal homes as a result of this filthy way of life. People's lives, including those in royal courts, did not improve until the 19th century, when advances in sanitation and technology made life better for many people. Many European royals still move from home to home, but they do so for fun rather than to avoid dirty environments.